Welcome to the first turn. I'm your host, Hyena, and today, Lama and I talk about the reveals at Warhammer Fest for the gambit of Games Workshop games. We evaluate our predictions from last week and talk about our favorite things revealed and more. Enjoy. At Underworlds, they make so many models that it's like, I want to see that made into a unit for the game. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, speaking of that, though, the Stormcast unit from the new Warcry box, mm -hmm. uh, three really, really cool-looking models. Very, very characterful. Um, way way more interesting compared to the previous Wizards, because this is a Wizard unit. And that um, Wizard Chamber, was it called? I don't remember. But it's something new. I know the unit that they are based on is probably going to be something new for Stormcast. Very close to, okay. like, the next release. Got it. Um, hell, Stormcast might even be getting a new chapter, a new a new chamber being opened in um, the summer campaign setting that we're getting. And I'll tell you why. These units have a new special name for their weapons called... Oh, man, it was something really silly. Imagine a drum roll. It was called Valedictors, like Valedictorian. Uh, they were called Valedictor... Weapons, something like that. Which Valedictor, that is a nonsense thing that Stormcast have not had yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm wondering if it's going to be a new unit to replace, not really replace, but a uh, a better version, call it that, of their previous like elite paladin wizards that they had in uh, you know the sacrosanct chamber of, yeah. of which That's what wizard members. Yeah. So we don't know really what. Sub faction is called, but it's definitely a new unit name. That's for sure. Uh, they're super cool. They're wizards. Um, they have shooting attacks, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the, the they're both shooty and fighty. The Doctor Doom looking one yeah. invokes that corn priest that came in that one three a little, man. A little, yeah, yeah, a little bit. A lot, a lot of similar. Drum, uh, yeah, the, the whatever of drum. Mm -hmm. Where he's got like the skull helmet and he's doing the same big kind headdress. Of yeah. Uh, so you can have those three, and they could be like a band. Yeah. Right. They're all yep. like singing. They're all singing different like notes, but they're all doing like uh, opera. You know, yep. uh, all with their hand out. Yep. <laughs> you have the drum guy. You've got him, and you have the um, the guy vampire. From, the vampire from Crimson Court. Yep. There you go. All three of them. Yep. Yeah, like a, a street corner. Uh, um, three tenors. You know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That would be really funny to pull that. Yep. Like as like a, a unit at like a a golden demon or something. Um, but yeah, the models are great. Um, I, I really these Zinch ones are just some of the weirdest looking things. Which which is exactly what Zinch should be should yeah. be. And I was just saying that I think so many of these little guys. I get that the unit's full of character, and they're maybe not an invading force. I would love to see some of that made into units, so that well, I'm wondering if they're, maybe the Zinch they're, demon side is more than just yeah. Well, I, I would I would call horror, all horror, these horror. I would call all these things horrors, right? They're like different versions of horrors. Yeah. The only units that we have like in the army proper are pink, blue, and brimstone horrors. Yeah. But I still think these are horrors. Like the one little guy kind of looks like a brimstone horror, like a, does. like a little blue horror. This one looks like um the one with the four legs looks like. I don't know, like a, a, a some kind of a Zangor mutant of some kind. Mm -hmm. This little like toothed body guy, like the dog. I don't know, it's some kind of horror. Yeah. Whatever. And then um, the, the fish horror. Yeah, super cool. I really like that. That might, might, might be my favorite of the four. Yeah. It's the fish one. Um, but yeah, it's it's super cool. I don't know if it's gonna go anywhere, but we'll see. Yeah. And the, and then the leader itself is just like absolutely everything you'd want from a yeah. He's so siege wizard. He's so Pan's labyrinth. Yep. You know. In a in a good way because I didn't care for Pan's Labyrinth the movie very no, much, no. but this evokes those kind of like it just the 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 amount of very slim. Mm -hmm. It's just what I'm gonna I'm gonna fanboy GW a bit here, but it's just what like no other miniature company is doing to where they the negative space you're seeing more companies try to figure that out, mm -hmm. but the fact that GW can get these details, they can get a sword blade to be as thin and sharp as it's supposed to be. They can get a quill pen. To be as delicate looking as it's supposed to be, they can get wisps to be as thin and like <laughs> ethereal as they need to be, like yeah. just remarkable how close and I know that makes them fragile, but like it's worth it. Just looks so good. I'd I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're pretty durable. I mean, they're uh, springy. Yeah. You know, you don't I'd rather have that easy. than like chunky. Yeah, don't know what to do with the detail when you're painting it. Um, but I mean, small potatoes. We've gotten this steady stream this last week of tenth yeah. edition goodies. Well, we had uh, a warmer fest last weekend. Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah that was. In between, which uh, 
addressing our some of our predictions, uh, I guess we were a little too optimistic about some things. Uh, pretty well on about some things, and some of our our old predictions came came full circle, Somehow. kind of. Well, like in in AOS, we wanted to see more cities. Yeah. We did, just didn't Not see as much. much. I, I was we, hoping we, we saw, right. admittedly, those Cavaliers, which coolest cavalry they've made yeah. in a long time. I I went on a limb and said it might be my favorite models they've ever made. <laughs> yeah, like period. Yep. End statement. I love them. They're 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 um, they're great. They're everything that I wanted Empire to be. Yeah, you know, in terms of aesthetic, I love them. They're elite. They're heavily armored. There's lots of character, but uh, yet yeah, totally human in scale. Totally human, but still has the the you know evocative of like medieval knights. Mm-hmm. They've all got classic helmets and weapons. You know, great. I loved them. Yep. Um, I I had seen some. I thought we'd see a little more than that. Though. I yeah. thought we'd see like the finish of the infantry unit. I had seen maybe a character. Yeah, I had seen some complaints of people because you know internet's full of complaining. Yep. Uh, that the ooh, the heads what? of the horses are too small. When you look at them, it's like okay, they look a little small. But what I think they're misinterpreting is is just the scale of the horse inside. I think the armor is so heavy. Yeah. That it 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 tricks the eye into thinking the ho- the body of the horse is bigger than it is, which makes the head look smaller. Maybe and, you know, like and, I think it's it's, it's not an illusion. And it's a two D picture, yeah, which always translates differently right. in person. And then, um, you know, when I think of when I have seen horses in person, which we we have some, mm-hmm. they they're real still. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have giant heads. Right. It's like their neck is pretty is a pretty thick pillar beneath it. Mm-hmm. Like their bodies are massive, um, and their legs are pretty skinny. I think it's funny when you take a still of a, like a horse running, and if it's not like all four legs tucked up, in like that one, like it's yeah, you know, mid mid step with all four legs, they look really goofy. <laughs> yep. Stills of horses are just like straight legs out everywhere, and it doesn't look <laughs> like they're actually doing what they're supposed to do like correctly. No. So I know there was um there was a horse unit that that did that, and it was the um. The Lumineth horses, they had lots of like straight legs, and people were like, Whoa, they look so dumb. Why are their legs pointed out like that? And it's like, Go look at stills of horses go, running. Go, yeah, go go look at, at a horse at like 60 frames per second and, and do one at a time and go through it. And it's like, Oh, if you stop on frame like 22, that's exactly what a horse looks like. It's just this weird, like, straight legs, all four straight legs, you know, just yep. pointing in different directions. It yep. is, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's, the most awkward looking graceful animal yeah, right that and maybe a giraffe <laughs> and like but the, those were spectacular mm-hmm. i like i like what they've chosen for the paint scheme they've left the palette pretty neutral yep. to i'm guessing that'll let people really go nuts with it. but i did want a little more in aos yep. uh and that was just kind of the extent of it they showed us a road map i was a little disappointed on the sunday which was the aos yeah the it was the most disappointing day because it was AOS, it was Horse Heresy, Horse Heresy and it was uh, Old World. And there was just like... Nothing. Eh. I mean, we did get to see um, the other book this summer is a campaign book, not a battle tome. Like Which like like their, like their previous uh, roadmap led us to believe. Right. Because they were like, uh, second battle tome coming in, in, in the summer. And we're like, cool. And you look and it's just like, no, campaign book. Right, and, and, it'll be sat, a, and it'll be a four-part campaign. And we sat there you know? on our prediction episode a yeah. week ago, like, speculating what could it be, because all the armies are almost done. Right. Um, Turns out none. None. <laughs> and then... There's four campaign Flash Eater courts are TBD? Yeah, and it sounds like they're going to get a lot. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, which they sorely need, so good for them. Yeah. The models they showed off for them, for both Warcry and whatever that box set was. Yeah. That was the well, that, that was a worker one. Yeah, that was the worker box with the baboons and the single character they showed oh, for. Did them. we see the baboons at that event? Yeah, we did. Yeah, okay. And then they showed a single character for a handful of armies for each of the campaign books. Yeah. Um, and Flesh Eater Courts got one there too. Yeah. And they look great. I hope they keep pushing that for them. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually look like people who have gotten disheveled and plaguey and gross, as opposed to like the previous ghouls that just. I don't know those what they're. I don't people. know <laughs> what they were supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, so I was excited Gi- about that. We, we saw, got giant piggy. We got the big piggy for Iron Jaws, which I was not expecting because it's it's so far out of like release schedule. Yeah, and he's huge with you two know? sidecar orcs. Yeah. Uh, I really like the look of it better. It, it leans more into a realistic look of the pig because if you look at the old, um, I mean, admittedly they're like five years old. I say now. They're not old, old, but they're, yeah. <laughs> they're like four or five years old now. Um, Gorgrantas. But the Gorgrantas are, are just they're really goofy looking. I remember, I remember thinking they were goofy looking when they first came out because their faces just looked 
like Muppets. <laughs> you know, like they they had they were all their teeth. It's were almost like that's what they designed the York Army to be. It's like yeah. it is a Jim Henson yeah. army. But then this new pig looks amazing. Like it's a monster. It, is yeah, what it is. It is, yeah. it is so cool. I I love it. And enormous. Yeah. Like so, I thought it was super cool. But it makes me wonder, like, well, what, where are they going with the rest of the armies for this four part campaign? Yeah. You know, like, what else is there going to be a, a you know another army that gets a monster? Are there going to be infantry releases for they some said, armies? Yeah, they said models yeah. will be coming out for. 12 factions. Yeah. They said at least 12. Yeah. So that so, covers the base one. So if you if you think four books, 12 releases, three per, well, this first one already has four slated, and then we yep. assume the piggy's going to be for one of them. Yeah. Right? So we're looking at, well, one of the four books now is only going to have at most two. Because, Unless they said at least you know, 12 means. Right, right. Yeah. So if, if we're assuming 12, yep. four are done. We've got eight left, but over three, 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 two. Sure. Maybe the piggy plus another, that's such a big a, model, another monster, or maybe the piggy by itself for one of them, yeah. and then you've got two more, three, um, three. you know, three threes or something. Could be like something like that, you know. Um, yeah, because we'll we, we saw another fire slayer hero, yeah. um, which, which eh. fire slayers need a unit, they yes. need new units, right? Um, we've always talked about wanting to see them lean into the fire elementals mm -hmm. and, and those rock monsters kind of that you see in their so artwork. So kind of like and, lava monsters, yep. salamanders, turtles, whatever, fires, you know. Even just the ones that look like they're endless spell. Right. Uh, and, you know, actual elementals. Like, yep. in classic sense of, like, this is living magma. Yeah. I mean, they have uh, they have the, their, their, their mounts already, which are, like, fire beasts. Well, they don't all grow to that size, you know? They're not either, A, all that many. They can either be smaller than that or they can be bigger than that. L you know, lean into that then. Yep. You know, make make a, a, a unit of, like, juveniles of that whatever species. And, and they, they either like, run you know? packs on their own or they're cavalry. Right. Cavalry, they can be, you know, a pack of three of them as a unit. Yep. It could be, like, little ones and they're, like, a swarm <laughs> unit. Whatever. Anything. Give me something other than the two units of dwarves that they have. Yeah. Or the and, two and, kits. Rather. And stop just adding characters. You know? And and that said, the character they showed, I like that he was this dual hammer-wielding guy. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be something they could even go with. Um, we, haven't, we haven't really seen hammers for them before. It's, no. it's all axes yeah. all day. Yep. Uh, axes and javelins, you know, and throwing axes. Like, it's... Hammers are, are interesting. Yep. Um harkens back to old dwarves that that wielded hammers you know um it's it's not a unique pose though you know it looks like the dragon slayer model that we had that was that became grombrindle remember that yeah when they released the dragon slayer as the uh named character white dwarf uh it's very evocative of that pose which may not be an accident because right. i mean what we've seen recently is they're, they're they're really leaning hard into nostalgia yep they're trying to like find pieces of art they're trying to find Codex entries from old books and like bring those to life. I mean, look at any of the, any of like the monsters from, or, or I guess the the monster from Tyranids. Screamer Killer. The Screamer Killer yep. is it's the old model reimagined. Yep. Right. You have the uh, the Brain Bug is just the Zoanthrope. Old Zoanthrope. The old Zoanthrope. Yeah. You know, kind of evocative of that with the crest and the brains mm -hmm. everywhere. Like they're leaning so hard into that. Yep. That it's like, well, I mean. You find things from old fantasy that the that the these dwarves could have then, not just even, another even character from model. From their Fire Slayer artwork, they right. have stuff they're not using. Yeah. Like, but but um, on the plus side, it looks like Flesh Eater Courts are getting love, and they were one of the mm -hmm. the armies that really needed that that because their roster was also it's it's slim, but the models aren't that old. Yeah, uh, so they needed something. Definitely not the oldest roster out there. That title. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, 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 was, it was really yeah. funny because um, they showed off uh, Deathmaster Snickich from one of the 40 years 40 of year Warhammer. Things, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I mean, most models were made back then, about 40 years ago. And we still use, technically use. I was thinking about actually uh, doing a new post on Instagram uh, and being like, oh, new project. I, I just got some new Skaven models and just post the... Uh, the like the old gutter runners yep. or night runner metal <laughs> models that I have I have because I had them for a long time and just post those and be like oh I'll start a new project new new gutter runner models that I just got and then like make sure I include Games Workshop and then the gear they were made from the little tab <laughs> at the bottom you know just to be like this model's twenty eight years old kind of thing it's time come yeah. on yeah. get rid of them or make the new ones exactly and, and they did uh didn't they do another metal Deathmaster 
Snickage, because that was the first one they showed off. Uh, they did. So I have mine is um, uh, fine cast, but it was the same mold. Ugh. Yeah, They're, they did a Death Master. It's kind of very similar to that one, where it's like the three knives. Uh, that one looked a lot more chunky than the one I have, but it, maybe it is the same one. Yeah, I thought they did one update of him, but it was still metal. Okay. Um, so I mean, the one I have still has the blood slash poison dripping off the blades. It's still. Between this tail and his two swords that he has, yep. it still forms the uh, the Skaven symbol. You know, because if you I don't know if you've noticed that right. before, if you if you combine those like limbs holding the knives with the shape of the knife, it's like it's it's the Skaven. It's Skaven. You know, and the then Ashen um, Triangle or the Ashen the Ashen. Was that all four? Yeah, the the Flesh Shooter Quartz guy, the Dwarf guy. Yeah, the there was a piggy. there was a there was a new Grot support character for oh, yeah. for Squigs. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then there was who was the uh, um, the Death one. Oh, that was Flesh Eaters. What am I missing? Wasn't a chaos vampire. One? Wasn't a no. It wasn't chaos. There was no chaos character. Not yet. Did they just show three? No, that's four. Name them again. The Fire Slayer. Yeah. Piggy. Oh, the Piggy. Yeah. Okay. There was no no no. There was no foot character. I think Fire Slayer guy was a foot character. Not for order though. I'm talking about for chaos. Nope. Huh. I don't think the show is any chaos yet. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yet. I was speculating maybe uh, if we were to get something else to go along with the big pig, I think a great candidate would be for chaos getting something. And so we're going through and it's like, well, what, you know, I mean, there's plenty you could do for, for Skaven, you know, but like a monster, I don't know, maybe something kind of like new hell pit kind of monster, but mm. the current hell pit kit is fine. Yep. Um, it's one of the newer models you know, they have. <laughs> none, of, none of the four uh, uh, marked chaos gods or slaves, you know, really... Need a big monster. Nope. But then I was like, wait a minute. Beasts of Chaos could absolutely use a Jabber Slice. Why not? You know, like... Why not? I mean, there's there's the Jabber. You've got the um, the Cockatrice. Yep. You've got the um, the Chimera. All those are... Old All shit. three of those could yep. use an update. Yep. And I was like, that might be a candidate for an update as part of this campaign for Chaos. It might get a big, yep. a big monster. I would be okay with that. Um, but yeah, but there's, there's potential for... Anything getting getting released during this? So I'm like, normally in these campaigns, a new, we a new Doom Bolt. Yeah, I mean, generally in, in these campaigns, we don't see big updates like that. No, we see a new character gets released, or, or you know, a character gets updated rules as part of a campaign. I mean, look at look at last year or the year before last, right? When we got Kragnos, Kragnos and um, uh, Lord Croak were, yep. the, were the big centerpieces that we had gotten that time around. And then Order got a couple of little witch hunters, which was like, okay. Uh, you know, like it just wasn't as impressive. <laughs> yep. You know, getting get cities getting a little too little humans, which was, I think was funny. But uh, but there were all kinds of like updates for, for like faction leaders as part of that campaign. Like I said, this time they, they say, yes, lots of models. But but what is what's the extent of that, right? Are they going to release a, like a, a 10, man in box, 10 man box unit as part of this? Well, that's unprecedented. I don't think they've done that before. No. You know, usually it's it's character models and you know centerpiece things. Who knows? Um, I'd be excited if they if they use this as an opportunity to give out like here's a battle line unit update to X army. You know, I yeah. would I would love that. Oh, uh, um, what are they called? Savage orcs. Here, have a new unit of dudes on foot. So you know something like that. It's like you haven't gotten any attention pretty much ever. <laughs> We're going to give you a new unit as part of this. I would love that. We'll see. Instead, they'll get a hero. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was kind of a lot for AOS. Uh, the roadmap showed us the four campaign books. Like you said, Flesh Eater Courts, TBD, and then a mystery book sometime in whatever. Well, I think they, they... Was there more mystery? It was a red book with a hammer on it. I, I just was think it was, it was more... It was like the four campaign books. Is what we had seen there. Is like it was four campaign books and one red book, which which has to be flesh eaters with the last one. Yeah, it has to be. It's the last book that needs to be updated. You know. Yeah. So that's the most likely. Has hopefully. to be. Has to be. <laughs> um, was it? A, did we see a new ghost of any kind? No. Nighthawk. I mean, there's a underworld's war band of, of Nighthawk. Uh, that's what we saw, and they um, look fine. Horus Heresy. They showed us the. Uh, we we're getting a plastic Serastus Lancer, Lancer. which was super odd. What a weird um, choice. Yeah. If I was thinking of like the list of things for Horus Heresy that needed a plastic version of it, the 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 Serastus Lancer was not on, on the top of my list. Nope. 
And it's not, it doesn't even look like it's a dual kit with, like, the Asheron. Right. Right? It's like, that's super strange. Like, why not do a plastic kit for, like, the Magira or the Styrix? The Strix? Whatever it is. The Lightning Cannon one or, like, the, the, the two Mechanicus ones. And, like... Don't those use they the just, base plastic they, ex- Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it should be easy. <laughs> yeah. But now, whole nother chassis. Sarastis Knight. Uh, and I mean, not one of the Legion tanks. Right. They didn't do one of the Legion yeah. Super Heavy tanks. So, um, so the, I mean, and that's the that's the interesting bit, right? Yeah. Is it wasn't even four Marines that they got right. a model for. Which is, again, I think the first time they've done that. In plastic now. Yeah. In this newer run of stuff. Yeah. And then the uh, old world was a pointless reveal. Yep. So they showed off a foot resin Tomb King Lord and a foot resin Bretonian Squire. And no, he was a paladin. A paladin. And he was stunty and derpy looking. I, I'm not going to make friends with my comments on these models. I didn't think they were great. Yeah. The fact that their resin was cringe. Yeah. Um, but it also maybe confirms a suspicion we had that the old world was going to be to Age of Sigmar what Horus Heresy is to Warhammer 40k where it's it's the backdrop it's a specialist game well and I think I read somewhere in, in some of the comments or, or like the, the communications from Games Workshop where it was a little like a little clap backy mm-hmm. uh, a little like sassy where it's like hey the old world will be coming back but it's not going to have this massive like release event with a uh, like an amazing value box of two armies and things like that because we expect the people that want to play this game are veterans of the game and they want to play it again. And so you already have an army, right? Right. You bought an army back when the game was still around, right? And you still have that? Well, you, you can use that army again then. You know, and, like and you're not going to be able to, like, we'll re-release the boxes of these models. Sure. But, like... This yes. is for people who want to play it again, because, not new players. Because the outcry was... I mean, we've we've called that out a bit. The The players who outcried the game's demise were people who just weren't playing it. Yeah. They weren't supporting it. And then when the game went away, their outcries were... you. They acted like the game was thriving and bustling everywhere. And they, they pulled, killed it for no reason. And GW pulled the rug out yeah. from under for no reason. Now, game companies do do that. It does They're, happen. I mean, we've seen plenty of examples of that kind of thing happening. Sure. This is not one of them. It was like nope. they gave it like eight years to try to become healthy of again. Of drowning, yeah. yeah. And then it just didn't happen. So they're like, here's a new thing, which is immensely popular. And I'm like, I'm sorry if that steps on your, if that, if that hurts your feelings or that steps on your, you know, toes as a fantasy, old fantasy player. Right, because you, it's like, you, you can still play the game. You started you know? playing fantasy when you were 13 and, oh. and that's the memory you have. And yeah, it went away. But I know I was around to see the game when it was thriving, and mm-hmm. I was still around to see when the game was failing. Yeah. We saw it at events. We saw the sales, everything. We tried going back and playing it again yep. afterwards, and we're like, oh, right. Yeah. That's why this game didn't work, because and, it was so imbalanced. And you can talk about a mixture of the market interest changing from classic fantasy to other things, to mm-hmm. steampunk, to sci-fi. Or even high fantasy compared to lower fantasy. Right, and, and so... the the interest changed in the miniature realm and and it could have been that it was mismanaged but i'll say this gw released both 7th and 8th edition of fantasy mm-hmm. and they gave huge incentives for people to get back in yeah. big launch events they ate up whole summers with it they they released lots of the army books right off the bat tons of new kits that were super discounted yeah. and they sat there on the shelves the tournaments had shoved to empty tables everywhere uh, it got the game was always reduced down to one army being viable, and so when it went away, these people cried about it, and they wanted to see Age of Sigmar fail, and it didn't. Mm-hmm. Age of Sigmar is rocking, and people and like there's still people that are like, you know, this game, can they're still doing this experiment? Yeah, this Age of Sigmar experiment. What are you talking about? It's like it's five years in and it's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's thriving, and. Uh, and they even alluded to some of their sales things, which I, they might have been exaggerating, but they'd said that fantasy reached a point where their chaos black primer spray paint. No, I think that might have been a joke, but I believe it. Is it though? <laughs> you know? Because because chaos black spray is used by non Games Workshop yeah. game players. It's really funny. Um, I, like I fully believe that statistic. Mm-hmm. One, this one product is is selling is making us more profit than an entire game. Is. Well, I know they had said that they hadn't looked at the numbers in a while. And I remember talking to a rep back at a 2004 North American Games Day in Chicago. 
And it was when the Lord of the Rings movies had come to an end and the bubble of that game had started to burst. And like they said, they find, they hadn't looked for like four or five years. They looked at these rosy glasses at all their games and just kept making stuff. And then when that ended, when the Lord of the Rings thing came to a halt, especially in the U.S., they all of a sudden had to look at their financials and they saw that fantasy was just in the red. It mm-hmm. just wasn't making money. And they had said at that time, at that time, Space Marines on their own were outselling the entire Warhammer Fantasy line combined. And mm-hmm. a lot of players didn't believe it. But then we watched year after year. The game just shrank no matter how many new additions they kept trying. Yeah. And, and it just, the game died. And so that's why they did Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar is working. But GW is doing well enough now that they're like, okay, these people say they want it back. It's the people who played it before want it back. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the Total War crowd, even though it has raised, it has brought new eyeballs to the genre. Because I think video game players who got into it are going to take one look at what it costs to buy an army and are going to be like, oh, I'll just go or play Or they're going to get some models yeah. and assemble them and start painting for the first time. They're going to look bad because you just started painting for the first time and you want yep. your models to look amazing. And the assembly process is long and frustrating. Right. And and it's going to be like, and I have to do how many of these? This is only my first 10. And I have to find a way to haul these to a place to play them on a right. table and the game takes, what, three hours? Oh, sweet. Yeah. I think... I think that kind of those details are, are being missed when, yep. when people are considering like, oh, I love the, the tabletop game. I'll, I, mean, I love the computer game. I'll totally find it on tabletop. It's like, I don't think you will. And I think you Games know? Workshop has to look at, they have to dip their toe back into this. Mm-hmm. So they're drawing all these pretty maps and writing all the rules and everything. And that that probably doesn't take much from them. And and that's fine. But yeah, they got to start it off like they did Heresy. You got, they're going to have to ease people into it, and if it if it actually gets bit, they'll they'll add more. I guarantee you they'll then make more stuff for it. But I think right now it's going to be a you wanted it, so we're going to support the rules. Yeah, here's your here's you your veterans rules. who say you lost your game. Yeah. Use your models. Here's your rules. Here's your rule PDF. And they'll even have tournaments. Norm. They said every old army will be represented, mm-hmm. which is easy if they just like here's a PDF of your 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 old army book. Yep. Here it is. You can just go play now. You know. Yep. And it's like, okay, if, if if that's what the people want, cool, you know? It's, and if it's, it's truly what people want and it's successful, more power to them. And well, it's, you know? it is a little bit of, of, I think, Games Workshop telling those players who cried out for mm-hmm. it to put their money where their mouth is kind of thing. And here, we're going to give you the rules back. Now, support it. Play yeah. it. But we've seen so many examples of, of the same style of game being played and it. A lot of times falls into the same problems that yep. fantasy had, and as far as I can tell, it's going to be the same fantasy rules. Yep. You know, wheeling and turning and charging sides and morales and breaking units and running people. That's like all of that was just is not. Well, I was we, not interested. We saw. We saw. Um, was it Wrath of Kings or Kings of War? Both. Okay. Pretty one sure one of them's a skirmish game, and one of them was like oh, fantasy. Oh shit! Okay, I don't remember that. I know they were out at the same time. So one of those two plus you had. Um, the Game of Thrones game. You had Ninth Age or whatever had, that was called. Uh, you had the Mantic. Is it, which one was for Mantic? That was Kings of War. Um, there's another one. You have Conquest. You had... Um, well, Conquest is, is fantasy rules almost verbatim. Right. Except it's alternating. So a little different. Yeah. And no magic. Right. Anyway. Uh, but there's like there's been like a handful of games that have tried to maintain the, the, the fantasy vibe. Yeah. And it's just like, cool, but... I'm, I'm just not. You run into interested. the same things with um, having infantry stuck in blocks, pivoting, mm-hmm. and and doing doing things like that. And even though Conquest tried to show, because a lot of people are on that kick right now of alternating activations is mm-hmm. the way you fix everything, and yet those games are not. <laughs> so my my side sidebar or side side argument. My issue with alternating activations is that eventually. Maybe not even eventually. Maybe at list creation, you're going to have one side's going to have more activations than the opponent. Yep. And like in, you know, RPG games, you know, tabletop RPG like like D and D, number of actions, so action economy is always king. Yep. Right. Like worth like 40k, you could have fewer activations, but if they're powerful, and you they, they, well once, they right. get the job done. Yeah. Right. But but when you're alternating, eventually you're going to run out. And your opponent's going to have a bunch more than you are. Yep. And can just, like, basically get their turn. You know, quote, unquote. Well, and you know, we see a little bit of it with the combat system Mm -hmm. that AOS brought, and then they put it in 40k a bit. Because you will have that where if one side's got a bunch of units that want to be in combat, it's Mm -hmm. like you're alternating combats until the defending player runs out, 
and now the attacking player is like, well, I've still got these four units left to, to right. swing. Swing for free. Swing, swing, swing. Yeah, free. And, and, and alternating activations work beautifully, I think, in a skirmish game where everything's this single model at a time. Right. Makes perfect sense. But I think the... the I did want to see a little more interactivity in the new 40K rules, but yeah. we, we haven't seen much. Right. We have seen that they've geared stratagems towards being reactive or whatever they're going to call them, actions. Um, we have a lot to go there yet. We'll get yeah. to that in a minute. But fantasy, it looks like, is going to basically be the same rules that all these block-based systems use. Mm -hmm. And so I think it won't take long for people to remember. Right. And, and the nostalgia of someone being in their 40s and remembering the game they loved when they were 18, it's like that's only going to carry you so far. I mean, the first time you place your, your dragon on the table and it gets one shot by a cannon... Yep. Or, or you have a unit, like a block of elite infantry, and a cannonball bounces and rolls through and kills 40% of the unit. Yeah, or you have that thousand-point you know? block of elite infantry, and then yeah. someone turns a spell sideways on it, and it wipes them out right away. The first time that happens, someone's going to be like, okay, well, that's that shouldn't have happened. When, when and you, then you re-rack and do it again, and the exact same thing happens. Yeah, you're going to see, like, well, there's something, what's going on? There's a problem here. 40 minutes into people's first foray into the comeback of the old world... And they're going to say, we need GW to fix this. Right. That's going to be the first. Yeah. And and when it took, you waited this many years to 40 minutes in, need to put it back on the shelf. That That's what's going to happen. And I don't even know if it's really Games Workshop's fault. It's just, I think that style of gameplay of, of the whole march and pivot thing just lends itself to that. And it lends itself to ridiculous momentum swings mm -hmm. um, because of flanking and all that stuff. So I don't know. If they come out with a bunch of cool models, I'll be interested in the hobby part of that. Yeah, because we immediately were like, well, they can just look at what the work they've done with Creative Assembly, and there's inspiration right. for days. I'm seeing Ice Bear. I'm yeah. seeing Winter Witch. Yep. I'm seeing like everything from any, Cathay. Any kind of monstrous cavalry. Yep. I'm, I'm down with. Yep. Uh, anything from Cathay. Give me a gigantic samurai statue. Give me a, statue, give me a you know? floating trash lantern. Yeah. Give me that. I even do yep. that. Absolutely. Anything. Yep. Anything new. I I would. Yep. I'm down. And uh. You know, at the same time, I'm happy those players are going to have their thing. Yeah. Games Workshop's trying to, but they, they're hedging. I think they're they know it's a risk, so they're they're easing into it. Mm -hmm. They're giving you very few new models. They're allowing Forge World to make those characters right away. Let's go from there. Yeah. Um, the big the big reveal. Um, I mean, we saw stuff for the specialist games, but Underworlds is always a crapshoot at a preview event because mm -hmm. we don't know what factions are going to pluck. So we guessed, and it was wrong. We were wrong. Uh, it's ghosts. Sure. Yep. So it's like, yeah, okay. They could have used one. They have 24 things they can pluck from, yep. and then they always make unique characters for each. So Absolutely. we just never know what to guess there. The the 40K 10th, um, I'll say I got more than I thought. Yeah. Out of, like, our prediction, we we knew it was going to be whatever the starter box set mm -hmm. was going to look like. And then we tried to guess what would be in there. We actually under-guessed. Because you called the Space Marines pretty close. Yeah. They just randomly surprised us with, A, a fourth character. They threw in a fourth, which was the captain, which we yeah. had, I, I believe we did not see no. anywhere in the trailer. Yeah. I would have been happy with the three. Yep. A librarian, a medic, which the medic. Beautiful model. One of my favorites in, the, in that box, yeah. though. Um, and then we had the, the librarian, which we, which we fully expected. Yeah, we saw him early. Yeah. And the thing, so the side note about that apothecary what I was confused about is like, well, we already got a Primaris Apothecary. There was a Chaos model reveal, by the way. It was the Harbinger of Decay. Oh, the how best, did we forget the that? best one? Oh, my Back up. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> the Maggotkin of Nurgle, Harbinger of Decay, the cavalry riding Nurgle mortal yeah. for Age of Sigmar. Spectacular. What's the best when one? Even they, when even like Eddie and them mm -hmm. doing the Warhammer Fest announcement were like, I expect we'll see this one at uh, Golden Demons coming up. It's yep. like, yeah. Well, I had said that too. It was like, I because uh, I was, it was early. I was laying in bed. I turned to my wife because I woke her up accidentally yep. you know, to watch it. Whoops. And I was like, hey, look at this model. It's like, that's beautiful. We're going to see that at Golden Demon this next year. And they're like, eh, we fully expect to see a couple of these at Golden Demon next year. I was like, hey. <laughs> like, I had literally hey. just out loud said that. It was yep. so funny. Uh, but yeah, um, can't believe I forgot that. I know. Uh, back to 10th, to you, you had called. So the, the apothecary was neat. I was weirded out because it's like, well, we have a new Primaris apothecary. Why are they doing another one? Right. Well, it's a different like class of them called the the, the biologist or biologus, yeah. and it and and it's someone who extracts the genetic information and material from 
enemy factions, from aliens and from whatever, right. and they use that to buff which, which nearby we've marines. Which have really seen that idea before. No. Right? Because it was... You know, apothecaries are typically on the table to extract their own marine gene seed from fallen warriors so they can, you know, replace themselves. And whenever they're playable in the game, it's because somebody finds a way to hide them in a unit right. or put them on a bike. But when you think about it, it's like with, with the Primaris reinforcements, mm -hmm. we're not really have to worry about harvesting gene seeds anymore because we have a way to produce new marines yep. without the, the gland. Yeah, you know? they basically found a way to to call in Gilliman, came up with a way to basically yeah. have the material be copyable. Right, and so what that means is, is it, well, what are all these medics going to do now? Start doing research on the others, on the enemies, find, find ways a, to beat a them, better way to beat them. Yeah, so I thought that was super cool. Uh, and the and, model looks and great. it's in Gravis armor, so yeah. it's big and chunky. Like I, I think it looks yeah. great. And then um, the infantry count, we were like five short on. Yeah, we were so short. They gave uh, us. They gave us. Brand new stern guard. Yeah, yeah. Which, which I had called that. Yeah. I mean, I said that like you yeah. thought some sort of special weapon unit. Which, didn't know they would just which, flat out call them stern guard. Right. I didn't yeah. expect them to just be called stern guard, and they're like, yeah, stern guard veterans. Yeah. Like, okay. Cool. And I. That and, means, but that's the exciting thing about that. Then is that means I can get new Primaris model sized scaled stern guard veterans, but I can use my thirty stern guard that I already have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like you'll be fine. I love that. And and I, it's side note. I saw someone randomly have a clickbaity YouTube video that was like, "GW's plan to phase out Firstborn," and everyone thought this was bad. It's like we knew this was coming. And I'm I mean I'm I'm celebrating it. I am okay with it. I yeah. love it. And but this yeah. So Terminators and Stern Guard, they're like, "Yep, we're just going to call them that." Yeah. The fourth character, and then the fact that the Flamer unit is ten. Is ten. I was not expecting that. That was yeah. unexpected. And on the Tyranid side, we knew about Von Ryan's Leapers. We knew about... The Gaunts. The well, Gaunts. Well, I say that. We knew about the... Termagants. Termagants. And we knew yeah. about uh, Prime, Winged Prime. Yeah. And like... We, we thought there was going to be the, the Devourer bug in there, which it is. And then we thought... But it's a psychic it, then, then, Devourer. Yeah. And then we, well, it eats everything. But it really likes... It has a taste for psychic... Beauty. It likes to Pennywise yeah. eat brains, yeah. Uh, I mean, we thought there was going to be some kind of Biovore Pyrovore kind of thing, which we were, we were right and wrong about that, because there is a long-range artillery infantry thing in there. But it's a gaunt subspecies yeah. with like a symbiotic shoulder that cannon. connect that connects that connects whatever the gun alien is to the gaunt. Yeah. And so it's funny is the gaunt's limbs are like enslaved to this thing. Yeah. And it has to like walk tripedal almost. Whatever, they're fine. Yeah. He's fine. Sweet. Those yeah. are those I did not expect, and yeah. yet they're some of my favorite because even though they're goofy looking, yeah. they're kind of like my favorite models in the Well, they feel the very box. much like old, like third edition uh uh, Tyranids is what they remind me of. Except... Because there was a lot of goofy Tyranid shit back in the day. Yep. When they were trying new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember, I remember... Yeah. There were so many weird things. And this feels very much like one of those models. I'm... I can't wait for them to come out with a Necron... A new Necron unit when we when we see them. That is literally the, the hover chair. The old hover chair? Yeah. You remember the old hover chair? Yep. He's basically riding like a... Like a trike. But instead of it being wheels, it's like little... Pads. It's just yeah. hexagonal <laughs> pads. Yep. Like, I can't wait them to, like, you know, bring everything. Here's a cooler forward. version of yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Because it's like they have the, you know, the new Crescent bikes, but whatever. And then um, they show, and then they showed us the, the, the gaunts that have, like, Jordy LaForge. Yeah. Uh, they're little, Gordy like, LaForge, uh, they're little, little drone gaunts. Little blindy gaunts. Yeah. Um, they, I was not expecting that. And it sounds like their, their purpose is to kind of eat wounds for yeah. um, the bigger things. Which I'll be interested to see how that. Which yeah, I wasn't expecting that. It was three different gaunt units. Yeah. In the box, I was like, wow. Yeah. So we just okay. got way we missed, more. Missed that whole ten, ten man unit, whatever that was. And then they and then and then they did have both the screamer killer and the new brain bug. Yeah. With his little crony brains in there. Yeah, because well. our prediction was they're not going to put both in there, right? Not, no, not you know, three big monsters in the same <laughs> box, right? And they're like, nope, here you go. Have all of it. It's like, all right, well, there you go. It's a it's a remarkable starter box. Yeah. Um. So I'm super stoked for that. And then the Tyranids still have more models coming. Yeah. With their codex, the the one thing I was a little sad is in the rules trickle they've given us. Um. They did show us that Gene Stealers are still in Tyranids. I, know, I was disappointed by that. So that was more of our wish list. Mm -hmm. Um. A wish list for something to be removed, not added. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And they're still there, and they're still the old models, as far as we can tell. Yeah. Um. 
what they haven't shown us is the old Carnifex model in well, any well, new a pictures. A lot of the old, a lot of the old monsters they haven't shown us pictures of. Yeah, I don't think we've seen. It. Well, we've seen the rupture cannon, what that looks like on a yep. Tyrannifex. Yep. Um, but from the Tyrannifex forward, all those are sort of newer design. Right. Yeah, you're right. Um, but like who? But who knows about like the Carnifex kit? Yep. No clue. And they haven't shown us a Lictor. They haven't yep. shown us Biovore Pyrovore. Yeah. Um, so who knows? They could be getting updates. Yep. Or replaced. Um, uh, yep. I have to imagine, like the original Redemptor Dreadnought, which was released as an easy build, mm -hmm. um, and then eventually a full kit came later. The Screamer Killer might end up like that. I have to imagine. Um, I, but I'd be, I, it would be nice if it was a full new Carnifex kit because a little the other Carnifex is kind of small. In, By comparison, in, in, in yeah, today's yeah. scale of the game, the Carnifex is, is little. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it if the new kit comes out and it's not more just, dreadnought. It's so not just too. a Screamer Killer. Yeah. It's it's a screamer killer like body with an alternate head, alternate arms to make like a thorn, your gun a, a, a thorn your, back yeah. is what it was called. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and you use like seventy percent of the same model, but then it's got other bits, and it yeah. creates multiple things. You know, that's the replacement to the Carnifex of having the just calling it a Carnifex and having different gun options. This is two separate units it can make. Yeah. In fact, and and I saw in the design video that they released, they talked about they wanted to make this thing that's from. The Carnifex genus, but doesn't step on the toes of the Carnifex. Okay. So, um, yeah. So it could be it could be their the old models going away. Maybe it's not. I don't mm -hmm. know because there's a lot of the aesthetics of the Screamer Killer that are that are vastly different. Yeah. But at first, there were a lot of funny jokes about his look because we only got one directional, two dimensional <laughs> yep. image front of his face, <laughs> and he just looked like a guy with a skull. Yeah. Like just just that bald mullet, and so there were memes of like. Uh, our friend Bob from China sent us a funny picture mm -hmm. to compare it to. We had Kevin from the office, like that yeah. he looked like. Yeah, oh, great. But then once I saw him at other angles, I actually the model I, really grew on me. I really like it. Um, yeah, and I got to see some folks or pictures and battle reports of folks who got to do the demo at Warhammer Fest. I guess I guess it was a queue similar to that new Marvel game. Mm. You had to get there in the morning. You had to sign up. They only had so many slots during the day. You got to play one full round. Yeah, one full battle round. Okay. Um, and, and all that it was for the armies were just two of the starter kits on each side. Um, and, and they were not doing any, um, stratagems or any, uh, unique army special rules. It was basically the rules on the cards okay. and, and go through the phases. Um, and the guys at Goonhammer, at least, who a lot of people trust them, um, they said when they got done playing that first round, they just wanted to play more. Mm -hmm. And they, they really liked how a lot of it felt. They said weapons that feel like they should... So stuff, everything they said was more durable, but nothing felt unkillable. Mm. And whenever you used a weapon against a target it was clearly designed for, it pretty much always skews the, the way it's supposed to, but doesn't like do well or nothing. It was like, well, if I'm firing this anti-tank weapon at a monster or a vehicle, it almost always puts them on like a five-up armor save. But if I'm firing my infantry at that thing, they get their two up and it's like, does nothing. Mm -hmm. And you're wounded on, you know... Hard, Five, hard to hit sixes, dice. Yeah, yeah. And so they said it felt like it was supposed to. So there was just no like catch all units that just aimed at a thing. And, well, and they might have designed the starter box to be that way. Right. But we were, that is off the gate, if that initial impression they got. Because mm -hmm. the only complaints they had about the thing at all was just the way the queue system worked to get into play. Which <laughs> is irrelevant. Yeah. To me, I well, I'm, I'm not a fan of how they ran the event. Well, that has nothing to do with the game. Right. You know, that has nothing to do with the rule set. They otherwise gave it a pretty great review, okay. and um, and that was some of that that they're describing, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they were only allowed to say so much, was exactly stuff we've we've asked for. Yeah, like we we thought everything needed to be a little more durable because the game was so lethal. And yeah. while lethality is kind of fun, it's not fun on the other end of it when you don't get to ever play with and your especially army, especially when it's I go my whole turn and you go your whole turn. It's supposed to be that type of game. Yep. Yeah. Everything Which being, they showed us it's still going to be, you right. go, I go. But like everything being able to kill everything very efficiently means like there's a chance that it's like you just get wiped out before you get a turn. Yeah, or you, you know? or even if you lose like not everything, but like a third of your army turn one, well, now when I go to punch back, I just can't hit you yeah. as hard. And it's funny, is in the comment section below the Goonhammer article, there were people hacking it out back and forth, some reasonable, but others were saying that very complaint, like, well, I'm used to my... Special last cannon doing uh, D D. What were they doing at the end? D three plus three. D three plus three, and then two shots, and then re rolling, and they're like, no, if it's D six plus one, that just sounds like it's gonna be less. It's like 
yes, it's going to be less reliable. Yeah. But guess what? It's a different edition of the game. Everything is changing. Everything. Uh, maybe not everything. A lot of things are... Everything is being looked at, and some things are changing. Yeah. Like, you saw plasma guns. They are the same exact rules. Strength 7, up to strength 8. AP 2, up to AP 3. 2 damage, up to 3 damage. Yep. Like... Chance to get hurt. Yep. I mean, or 1 to 2 damage, whatever. Was it 2 to 3? I don't know. Whatever. Regardless. It was like, this is a plasma gun, this is what you expect, or a plasma missile, this is what we expect it to be, because this is how it has always been. Mm -hmm. But there were plenty of things that had increased strength. Uh, a lot of the characters have just buckets of attacks. They showed Abaddon hits. today. <laughs> I mean, Abaddon is, is, is interesting, because he's not as durable as, like, Gilliman. Nope. But I'd say he's a pinch fightier. Probably, yeah. Uh, because it was like, eight, each one of them had, like, eight attacks with their strike Profile at like flat three damage and like fourteen attacks yep. with their with Sweet. their swipe sweeping, yep. but like Abaddon's ability to both through the Chaos Marines rules they showed off the to rights. be able to like yeah. take a take a bravery check to get either lethal hits or sustained hits for extra hits on sixes, plus the fact that he gets kind of like all kinds of re rolls, plus the, the fact that his three stances were fucking amazing. Yeah. One of them is just I have a bubble of four pin bone. So on the turn you're trying to slug your way across the, the battlefield, you and units near him get a four pin bone like against everything. And that's amazing. And with that that with them ticking back the lethality of the mm -hmm. firearms, all of a sudden that four pin bone just seems insane. Yeah. And and they even pointed out, they made special note to him, we knew they would do this, that Abaddon breaks the rule already mm. of characters like buffing the unit they're attached to. Yeah. He does an aura well, still. I mean, they did say that very early on that some characters do do this. And I, I but imagine, they're, but they're singular, um, powerful. You know, they're going to be those guys beings. who have that epic hero keyword. I right. bet. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I, I, so I think you're looking at your Gillum and your Gazkill, your Abaddon. I mean, they, your, they said that those characters, while Swarmlord had a rule like that, well, yeah. they don't join the unit. Mm -hmm. They give buffs to nearby units, and you can't target them. Similar to them being part of the unit. Yeah. If you're more than twelve inches away. So it's like they said that there, there was that. You know, you, uh, I remember a character you, like um, what's the what's the Iron Father? Um, Pharos. Pharos has that, except instead of infantry, it's for vehicles. Yeah. So vehicles bodyguard him, which yeah. is very fitting. Yep. Yeah. You know, so it's like okay, I'm fine with all of this. You know, and and it's funny is like I think you asked for that thing might have been a, I don't know half a year ago, but you were like something needs to make those characters feel like that, yeah. feel epic, feel. Uh, they either need to be more durable or do things differently than other characters. And this is like, mm -hmm. this is pretty close to that, yeah. on, at least initially. And again, all that we're seeing is the index cards right, right now. Um, their codexes could look But just the fact that, a, that a, a character that we had before, that only could... The character like Gilliman now has a maximum damage on his sword of like 24. Mm -hmm. is, is, is enormous. Yep. Like that's, in, that's an insane amount of... Melee damage should they get there. In addition to its like rapid fire four or assault four, or whatever <laughs> yeah. two damage like bolter that he can do on the way. It's like I'm I'm on board for for epic heroes being epic. Yep. Right. Like so, there was like three things I wanted, but they're making for, a cost that for way. Epic yeah. Uh, yeah, an increased cost and an increased effectiveness on the on the battlefield. Have some kind of like way to prevent them from from just being eliminated immediately. You know. Um, damage reduction or like being able to hide or and that could something. end up in that epic hero right. keyword and I'm hoping it does yeah. I'm hoping it's like oh epic heroes are minus one damage because or, or something like that because it's like epic heroes are still the ones we've seen because we've seen, we've seen three of them mm -hmm. Abaddon Gilliman and Swarmlord yep are all kind of in that nine or ten wound range yep. and it's like when you've got weapons like Melta guns that are d6 plus two or like the last cannons are D six plus one. Getting hit with just a couple of these could just end your life immediately. <laughs> you know, even if you're this epic here, it's like there are still anti tank weapons that are still very good against <laughs> yep. this kind of character. Yep. That it's like, I mean, there needs to be some kind of other gate to prevent them from just being. Eliminated. I did. I did see on the Redemptor that they put the keyword Walker mm -hmm. back in the bottom of that. Well, I'm I'm assuming they're gonna do. Uh, some kind of USRs for roll. Yep. You know, so like anything that's that's riding a thing will be mounted. Yep. So whether it's a horse or it's a bike, sp a space or a, bike, yep. or just a traditional bike, or it's a guy riding another guy, whatever. <laughs> 
It's going to be mounted. So it's not like biker and cavalry anymore. Mounted is the overall yep. keyword for everything like that. Yeah, no need to separate They'll have many. monsters. They'll have yeah. vehicles. They'll have infantry. And like you said, walker could be its own special yep. subtype of vehicle, you mm-hmm. know, where it's like they've got their own specific types of rules. Maybe they can, like, go across terrain different than, a, like, a tracked vehicle can. Right. Something like that, you know? I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited yeah. about it. Yeah. I love that kind of thing. And I liked also that they didn't make... Um, at least the shooty dreadnought good at everything. Right. His melee attacks and are he terrible. He just kicks and they're bad. He kicks with lame. Moves. I mean, it's it's better than than what I was expecting though. It, it, if we're thinking about an old edition, because before he would have like three attacks hitting on fives <laughs> for like strength six zero one. Like his current melee stats are like like way better than that though. Even yeah. with just kicks, he's like strength six minus one one. Just like okay. That's not terrible. That's not a bad profile, but he's going to be like a 200-point model. It's bad if he was dedicated melee. Yeah, he doesn't want to be you know? stuck. But he can still that. like kick some things away from him, and he just get, doesn't get just tied up, you know? Yeah, well, well, maybe. And so I think the idea there is, like, they don't want the classic... The reason people don't play these walkers is because mm-hmm. you can throw a derpy infantry unit at them and tie them up. Right. And so maybe it's enough. Maybe he'll still get to shoot. If he's in combat? Well, we had seen that at least for the one detachment, you get to choose your, like, tactic for the turn, and one of them is just retreat and still shoot. Like, I think there's going to be very little impeding Space Marine armies from, like, doing what they want to do. Because every turn they can either advance and still shoot, they can retreat and still shoot, or they can... Well, I thought each one of those said one per game. Once per game. Once per game. I thought it was was every turn you had to choose which one you wanted to do. It was, yeah, but each one can only be used once per game. Oh, that's interesting, man. Yeah. I like that. So do I. Good. Good. And I, I think I think what Marines are going to get is they they, they said that um, they called out specifically there's going to be way fewer rerolls in the game. Mm-hmm. But well, they say that, but, but I've seen a lot. So but far. that's going to be what Marines do. Okay. That's going to be like Marines thing, showing their reliability. Okay. Their, their, um, and so I think their durability, their reliability will end up a tick higher than most armies on average. But they're going to probably be, pay for it. But they're going to be expensive. Okay. Yeah. And as as long as they don't suck <laughs> compared to everyone else, because their infantry quickly fall behind everybody else's, mm-hmm. then then great. Um, what I don't want to see is then when Drukhari come out, their infantry are cheaper, faster, their weapons do more, and like mm-hmm. you know, because that seems to happen. They both can fight and shoot simultaneously. Right. Like, they everything. they have weapons. They never have to worry about changing because they're good against all targets and mm-hmm. like. They, they just if they can avoid that, great. Um, I agree. Uh, they they showed that gene stealers have two wounds now. Yeah. Um, so I heard some belly aching about that too, where I was like, oh, cool. They have four attacks with you know some kind of cookie kind of thing on them, but yeah. but five ups invuln save lame. That's like but twice as durable. They, two two wounds. They've always and they've had always had that. But I, for a bit they had a four up. Armor. For a bit they did. So they're five up armor, five up invuln now. And then four swings, two wounds apiece, eight inch move, eight inch scout move to be in the game. Like, what more do you want? It can't be this brick unit that can kill everything in the game like it used to be. Well, like, well, and even on. then, it pretty, it's pretty close to it. Yeah. Like the the six inch or the the eight inch now. So you have to go back to fourth or fifth edition where they had a beginning of the game could come in on a table edge mm-hmm. and move. And then they could still run, and they could still charge. But those were all in sixes Mm -hmm. back then. Now they're letting them start the game with an eight-inch scout move, and they can still then move eight. And they're probably going to have some rule that lets them fight. Right. And so, awesome. The four attacks apiece, yep, that's what Gene Steelers do. Yeah. The five up is what they always had, except for a blip where they gave them a four. Mm -hmm. Also, the AP's down and everything. Yep. So and, like, again, we're two wounds. means you're twice as durable. They are twice as durable as they've been. And they're just as fighty as they've always been. Yeah. So I think they're fine, people. I know. Um, yeah, that, the, the, the Tyranid super excited me. I didn't think that would because I just I never get into the playing side of it much. And, like, might have to do it. Might have to commit. Mm-hmm. Might have to get a... Yeah. Both flex sounds so like yeah. a Tyranid, right? So I, uh, overall, though, we were really pleased with, with the weekend's reveals. 
Uh, we've just gotten slightly more information about that same kind of stuff uh, as the week's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have to call out two more things. Um, one of the things that we uh, were talking about last week that kind of we were right about, with, but then we, we got we got duped, was the um, the next Warcry set that had those um, ghouls in it versus yeah. the crusading like Stormcast army. And, oh man, I, I gotta say... The guy who was talking about any of the Sigmar stuff made me not want to play the game at all. Because <laughs> everything he said just made it sound so boring. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't... It was a it, guy I didn't it recognize. It didn't make me yeah. more excited about the game. I was just like, just let me look at the things and stop talking. Because it's like, you're you're bumming me out here. <laughs> um, but, no, no offense if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but the 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 box that that they come in was indeed called Nightmare Quest, like we were talking about last week, mm. um, instead of Power and Madness, which I had seen a leak that it was oh, titled yeah. as. That in fact was the Nightmare Quest of of uh, um, Crusading Stormcast Eternal versus the uh, the Flesh Eater Chords. So that's nice. There's not a fifth box. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I have to also call out a prediction I made. I don't know, a long time ago, like six, eight months ago, about um, about a kill team release of what I was hoping we'd get in a kill team, and it was a, like, inquisitorial warband. That was the the uh, the release we got in for, Agents for, of the for, for kill team. Yeah. Yeah. And the kill team expansion was literally it's a servitor and an assassin and some zealots and scions, but... Um, but that kind of thing versus that uh, that re-release that they had they had done of the the chaos um, followers with the um, the cultists and the mutants the, and the, the, all the mutants and the uh, like the, the the group of five like agitators I don't know what do you want to call them they're like the the command squad plus like the mutated like homunculus mid mutation cultist like all <laughs> that versus the inquisitor warband because um, I had called out the inquisitor warband as a, as a thing a long time ago and it's like. Well, there it is. You know, I think that was when we got the Phobos kill team. I was like, Inquisitor, Inquisitorial Warband, back, you know, a you know, year ago. Or six months ago. And then, but no, in fact, it was this year we're getting that. So I thought that was, was super So people cool. can go back through our dozens of episodes yeah. and find that one. Find that exact one. Yep. And uh, quote it. You know, if yep. you find it, throw it in the, throw it in the comments of yep. which episode it was, because I swear it's there. <laughs> Yeah, and then we got a payoff of that Gland Warrior, which we were talking about uh, last summer. The uh, the really cool like Katachan Halberd guy. Yep. He's part of that warband, which I thought was super cool. Yeah. Gland. Finally got him. Callback model. Yeah. So super cool. Uh, really pleased with most of the stuff. Like we said, uh, that we saw over the weekend. Uh, there was a lot. Not as much for the things we were our, our pet projects yep. didn't get as much attention as I would have liked, but. You can't really complain because tenth edition information is it's just so good. overflowing. There's yeah. so much you can't take the spotlight away from tenth edition. No, you know, like and and the knights were this close to stealing the spotlight. Yeah, and and I, and I think <laughs> and I think they they thought of that. Yeah. It could have been they had more for all of those systems that they could reveal. Right, but the Warhammer Fest had to really be about tenth edition. Right, it just did, um, and they didn't disappoint with what they showed us for tenth edition. Right. Yep. So yeah, super happy. Uh, I hope we're going to get more information soon about uh, dates and pre-order dates for some of this stuff, because I can't wait to get my hands on it. No um, kidding. Uh, speaking of that, though, uh, there's some other things I can't wait to get my hands on, uh, particularly something to eat for dinner. I mean, it was a full release schedule, but we need to be full. Yeah. Yeah. Let's eat. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed Check out our new episodes every Friday at Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible on Podbean. You can also follow myself and Lama on Instagram for more. We are at Hyena Paints Minis and at Lama Paints Minis. Music provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. And as always, we'll catch you next time.